when Alex was 19, a sophomore in college. We went on a family vacation to Hawaii. And we had been in Hawaii for a day or so when he complained of a monstrous headache and took him to an emergency room and in the end, he had a seizure. We took him back to the hotel and then that night he had more seizures. And then he had ultimately what became what's called status epilepticus, meaning he had seizures that would not stop. I wasn't aware that it was possible that someone's brain could seize and not stop seizing. It was horrifically frightening. Each year, at least 150,000 people are diagnosed with epilepsy. We sometimes see abrupt onset of very hard to control seizures in an otherwise healthy person who doesn't have epilepsy or a prior history of a brain injury. This is called status epilepticus. We generally think of epilepsy as having either a genetic cause or acquired as a consequence of some other disorder affecting part of the brain. This could include really any kind of structural brain abnormality, like a tumor or injury to the brain, such as a stroke, head trauma, or traumatic brain injury, or injury to the brain by an infection or the immune system. But sometimes we just can't be sure why a person has acquired epilepsy. It was an infection that reached his brain, most likely viral encephalitis, and the insult to his brain was so intense that um, it caused these seizures. He was essentially put into a coma because the seizures couldn't be controlled. His life was certainly in danger a number of times. After about six months, he was waking up from this coma, but not able to walk any longer due to the impact of being in a coma for that long and some damage to his nerves and with profound epilepsy, seizures that required tremendous amount of medication to control there's a lot of medications that are used to treat epilepsy. Unfortunately, they really just treat the symptoms of epilepsy, that is the seizures, and they don't do much to treat the underlying cause of epilepsy. Often, these medications cause a lot of side effects. To make matters worse, about a third of people with epilepsy continue to have seizures with medical treatment. And this is why we really need to do the type of research that CURE is supporting to understand why people develop epilepsy in the first place. I started getting emails from someone named Susan Axelrod, whom I did not know, but I knew Susan's sister. So Susan was just reaching out to say, I'm here, I've been through this. I understood soon after that that she had started this effort to try to find a cure. Several organizations such as CURE recognize the importance of funding research in epilepsy. If we can get a better handle on why someone develops epilepsy, then we can develop better treatments. The idea of a cure seems very elusive. The idea of cures seems more realistic. So even if a cure would affect only a small percentage of the many kinds of epilepsies that there are, it would allow people to recognize that this incredibly complex and distressing problem has light at the end of the tunnel.